Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly if you'd like to join the discussion right here right now simply mute the page you are currently watching. Then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by the Adam Meakin, the one Sleeping Warrior, Righteous Force, Chocolate Sane, Arwin, and Tenth Man. Shout out straight away to Eagle, Plane, and Anchor for the Super Chat Super Sticker. Really appreciate your support. We're also joined by a whole bunch of people in Discord, so welcome one and all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good afternoon, and shout out to Brendis and Rumpa for their tremendous work on behalf of the Father for producing in the thousands. You're right, Dan. They're pretty diligent activists, them too. So let's do a bit of housekeeping. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without a container? No. Not no. even atmospheric pressure, Nathan. You no. can't have atmospheric pressure. Rumpus is mouth. Absolutely not. Riley, because that. that... Because atmosphere would be gas, right? Well, atmospheric pressure is um, defined as uh, the weight of the atmosphere pushing down. Problem is, yep. you haven't got any mechanism to create the weight because the molecules are too small and don't have any intermolecular bonds. So, like, where's the weight coming from when it's a gas? There is no weight to it. There's pressure, but there's no weight because there's no mass to give you any weight. You need mass, and the masses are only like at the molecular level. It's not really a zero value, but you can think of it as a zero value. Shout out to George Musa. <laughs> Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Nope. No. Nope. Any evidence Mad of a self perpetuating molten iron core at the center of a presupposed spherical Earth? Just some diagrams and a bit of claims from seismology that they can't get accurate. Any evidence of the presupposition itself? The R value, Earth radius? Nope. Yeah. An, assumption, nope. an assumption based on the standard model. Shout out to Mick West. <laughs> um, so, those of you watching live, check out all new Ball Busters, which will be tomorrow if you're watching this on Sunday then this has already aired yesterday, but check it out on Quantum Eraser YouTube channel. All new ball busters. Be here or be sphere for the live audience only. Any evidence of Earth curvature? Not from Montebello. Not on this plane. Not from Nottingham. What about axial rotation? Not down under. Any evidence of axial rotation? No, just the sky appears to be turning. That's it. No axis. Can't make any conclusions from it. Any... Why, why would they think you're spinning just because you see stuff moving in the sky? They assume it because they assume yeah. that when you travel out towards the horizon, your destination will be antipode from where you began. That assumption That's is essentially their formal logical fallacy, affirming the consequent. If the Earth is a sphere usually denoted by the word hemisphere in their example, then I will be travelling antipodal from where I began and observe star rotation on that antipodal location. Therefore, because I observe star rotation in the antipodal uh, position I've assumed, the Earth is a 
sphere. If B, then QQ, therefore B. Yeah, but why would you think it's you that's spinning? I think that's what Adam is trying to point out. Like, just w why, when you clearly see that it's the things up there are spinning, why would you assume because author automatically that that's you? Because authorities have told you yeah, that you are? Right. Brainwashing. Exactly. And because they're assuming that they're on a ball in the first place. Precisely. So it has to be. Yeah. The, the, so, that catches so a lot of the, could, that catches people like so Dr. Could. Daniel Faulkner out, the PhDs, because as far as they're concerned, well, obviously we're automatically on a ball. So when they start their example by stating automatically we're on a ball and space is automatically a vacuum because I've got a fundamentalist belief I've been brainwashed with, therefore my example will hold true under all circumstances because I beg the question that that is absolutely the case because I've been brainwashed. Therefore, totally justifiable to hold that position as true always. They also do it to live in a pseudo-reality so they can deny a creator. Any signs of any viable hypothesis in the entire history of astronomy, cosmology or astrophysics? <laughs> Not by Danny Faulkner. Yeah, no scientific experiments from Danny Faulkner because his, his, his discipline is not a science. Well, that concludes the housekeeping. Got that out of the way relatively he, quickly. Jolly good. And when he he when he does want to present something, it's hillbilly blue balls. <laughs> what is containers? There's two containers in a video called Gas Pressure Without a Container. Yeah, oh, yeah, not, not just one container, Anthony. Mr. Blue Arrows. <laughs> Listen, we're yeah, I saw that in Skype. You're like, not enough blue arrows. <laughs> and then the next shot is like 15 arrows all massive point at both containers. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> we are allowed to discriminate against containers on this show. As long as there's, there's containers in the picture, there's no, there's no equality, right? We can discriminate against containers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Can somebody pull that up? Anybody? You mean the the container with all the arrows on it? Yeah, if you can, that'd be great. Let's see if I can I'll stick it on screen, just so we can show that this demonstration claimed to be gas pressure without a container, cited by PhD Dr. Daniel Faulkner as a demonstration of gas pressure without a container, is in fact a demonstration of two, two. Containers. Different types of container, though, Nathan. I thought that was quite... If you renamed it, two different types of containers you can have for gases. He's got his but nice could, sealed unit to bring it along, and then he uses his, his leaky unit. It's an excellent demonstration of a gas pressure gradient, you know, like the one Zachary Zabala did. Shout out to Zach. Good times for all. G-U-D-T-I-M-S... Number four, A double L, good times for all. And he did a similar demonstration, gas pressure gradient in a container. Well, lovely. You know, obviously you can have gas pressure gradients so long as you've got the antecedent to have gas pressure in the first place. A container. When, when we were doing that with, with Zach, we, at no point did we suggest him trying to do it without the container. It would have seemed rather stupid. Um, it would. Without the container, there can be no pressure. But it, so, it was a good example, that, to show that even in that very small system, by just applying just a, a temperature variant, you you could generate a gradient in there. It was sufficient testing it from us to, to, to demonstrate the point. You, you know. I mean, it's just it's, attacking it's a straw. It's funny man. because that, that used to be one of their arguments. Yeah. How, how do you have a gas pressure gradient in a container? So it's kind of uh, ironic that a baller comes out and tries to prove gas pressure without a container, then uses two containers and proves a gas pressure gradient in a container. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Let yeah them I speak. put the arrow picture. I put the arrow picture in live chat. Yeah, Anthony had it up on screen. So let me get that straight. A guy that's a PhD astronomer says, don't look at YouTube videos for feather and then points to a YouTube video for Gober. Yeah. 
There you go, John. Do you feel better now? John? John? Uh, John's picture is different. I don't think you have enough one. arrows. No. <laughs> more arrows. More, more, <laughs> more arrows. arrows. <laughs> you ought to do this live uh, in response to Danny Faulkner, Sleeping Warrior. Just do I this and keep drawing out. arrows. What they're doing is, and it really, it's really odd because how critical are they of us if we start like distinguishing between the meanings of words? Yeah, on this occasion, they net they desperately need to distinguish against the meanings of words because they want to say, ah, but it's not an open container, is it? And we're like, yeah, but it's still containing the gas. If it contains the gas, there will be pressure. If it doesn't contain the gas, it's not a container, is it? So if it's containing the gas, there's pressure. And let's not forget, it's within a pressure gradient, right? The air around this is, is gas pressure. So this is just demonstrating a gas pressure within a gas pressure in a container. But if you did it in a vacuum, none of this would exist. All of this would be going, because we know that the gas pressure can't exist without a container. That's why it's the strongest yeah. argument. You make it a bit bigger. Yeah. Can you just make it a bit bigger? Yeah. That's what she okay. said. A bit too big. <laughs> there we go. That'll do. How does any matter clump together in empty space? <laughs> it doesn't do it. Mass doesn't attract mass. That's why Einstein came out, because they realized that mass isn't attracting mass and they needed an explanation. What's mass? Remember all the... All the, all the, all the hang on, which one was it? Oh no, it might not be actually. I might, I'll, I'll, I'll retract that on the basis that I might have got my chronology a little bit wrong. What is mass? <laughs> I don't know. We just make, this, we just make this shit up. <laughs> oh, I know. It's uh, inertia. No mole. No, I don't know. To some of them, it's both at the same time. A mass is a religious ceremony. No, a mass is the inertia of a mole. <laughs> <laughs> but it's time fit into that, though. And you said donut holes. And what did we add if to the blessing someone yesterday? Makes, if, if, someone, if someone makes another comment, it's going to be a mass of confusion here. <laughs> it's radius dominus, gravitus spiritus sanctus, the power. No. May the not actual force be with you. Go in peace in our you trust. Almost. Almost. Ah, that you can think of as a force. Don't forget that part. No, may the not actual force be with you. Mm, but you you have to mention that you can think of it as a force. That's a critical component about it. No, that's implied. It's it's with you. You can think of it as being with you, Alwyn. That's implied. You, you can. Mm. We will and we must. <laughs> <laughs> we must. <laughs> think of think think of gravity as as a force. And think of it being with you. Know, May the not that doesn't mean it really you. is one, but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level. Uh, the George oh, Musa quotes. I, I said this I ages know. ago. This was like, was it March or something or April that it came out? The George Musa interview. Yeah. I said it's at the hot. time, I was like, You're these coming quotes. Coming out of George Musa. I said these quotes will never get old, ever, <laughs> and they haven't. They're still just as fresh. I love them. Thank you, I, George I think, Musa. I, th I think they will. These. That specific quote will probably be fondly member remembered a hundred years from now. Because despite all this ruckus and all the issues and what's so important, that will still be freaking hilarious in a hundred years. <laughs> what, should, we, should we put some odds on uh, Danny Faulkner then? What's the next clusterfuck sentence he'll publish on Facebook? I don't know, but there is an interesting paradox. Spurs chemo rang me and he said, listen, don't go too harsh on that Danny Faulkner. I says, why? He said, because the ballers don't credit, they don't rate him as a credible witness for the ball for the ball earth. I said, really, why not? And he said, because he's um, a, a new age creationist. And I said, what's that got to do with the shape of the earth? And he said, yeah, but they don't consider him to be a real, like, uh, you know, like a protagonist for the ball earth. And I said, well, hang on a minute. I said, the shape of the earth has got nothing to do with his religious beliefs, right? So if we don't attack him, 
based on his claims, then wouldn't that support the assertion that we're a cult? But if we do attack him because of his claims about the shape of the earth, regardless of the fact that he's got a new age creationist view, doesn't that demonstrate that we're not actually a cult because it's got nothing to do with the religious side to it? It's purely about the shape of the earth, geometric shape. There is no religion there. It, and it they're proves parroting that wrong theirs is a religion. Because, because even pseudoscientists know that creation happened. So I don't I know, know what the heck you're right. talking about. But if I may uh, respond to what R Riley said for a moment, well, it kind I, of reminds me about how Christianity got branched off in all directions, and then they, despite believing in Christ, will still get to the point of killing each other over yeah. the small differences. So I think that's why Danny Faulkner is being rejected, because that little detail didn't fit, so suddenly he's a heretic. No, they're so, parroting the wrong pseudoscientists. Because even oh, the pseudoscientists oh. know, based on the laws of thermodynamics, that there was creation. So they're not even parroting that right pseudoscience. And Christianity, Christianity is not a religion, by the way. Thanks. I'm talking about the religious, uh, the religion of Christianity, not Christianity. There's a lot of religions concerning Christianity that all have their own interpretations, their own little rituals, their own little traditions that they create out of nothing. They're, siddly, they're not Christian. Christian. And there's hundreds of churches in America. They're not Both Christian. Christian. Yep. They're, they're not Christian. Yeah, but everybody thinks of name. them. Hold on, hold on, Arwen and Kiwi. He did actually qualify that. They're not Christian. He did say uh, that. You say though. Christian. They're not Christian. They call themselves Christian, but they're not Christian. He did qualify that. Qualify they're what? officially what registered said. Christian religions, even though it makes no sense. I don't care it's what they're registered. I don't care... If they got Judge Jones to go to court, I don't care if they got it notarized. They're just using the name in vain. Yeah. And that makes it a religion. What they do. And that yeah, is not the a Christian. That I tried to They're not Christian. I wasn't yeah, talking about the legitimacy of Christ or anything even close to that. I was talking about the setup, the occupation, the rituals, and the division, and the infighting over minor details. And that is exactly what the globe cult is becoming. It's fracturing, it's splitting up, infighting, it's starting to consume one another over small details while we're on the completely other side are just looking at why, <laughs> why are they doing that even? It makes no sense. My point is you labeled them Christian, then they're not. Yeah, yeah, well, sorry for your anti-Christian allergies. No, it's how quick and heated this got on the minute I said something to do with religion. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I'm because sorry. I keep on telling you Christianity is not a religion, but you keep on saying that it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everybody. It's like saying science and pseudoscience. You have to have a clear demarcation. Yeah. Well, we're not there yet. And Christianity is still a religion. And Christ, yeah, Christianity is not a religion. We'll still be following the truth. I don't give a shit about your anti-Christ allergies. You know, like like <laughs> like actual anti-Christ people and atheists have Christ allergies. You seem to have this severe anti-Christ response when it's not really necessary. What the hell are you talking? I wasn't about? talking about that. I'm talking about the, mean, mean, the talking religious about? community. <laughs> Every time I bring oh, up Christ, you seem to attack me on this. Well, that's not the argument. That's not, no, that's not what's I, happening. No, let's get back to the topic. You called those organizations Christian, and I said they're not Christian. They only by name, in vain. That's all I said. Right. Well, you gotta you gotta describe them anyway. So if they're registered as Christian, if everybody calls them Christian, if they so dress then they must be Christian. like Christians. <laughs> They so don't they have to be Christian, but I'll be calling them Christians very thank so, you. So why don't you call the pseudo So what is Christianity? Hang on, Arwen, why don't you, why do you not do that with pseudoscientists? Why do you call them pseudoscientists and not scientists? Because they, they what? Because they represent science well or not well? No, it's not irrelevant. Scientific method. No, it's not irrelevant. I have people coming to me all the time saying they're Christian. And I say, 
what makes you a Christian? And they misquote the Bible and misrepresent Christ. So how can they be a Christian if they misquote the Bible and misrepresent Christ? Well, maybe they had it wrong. Does, well, that still, does that make them not Christian if they got if it wrong and they're still trying know. to do the right thing? Does, the right that make them, does that make them Satanists, okay. tenth man? Excuse me, Arwen. Have no, no not fight. excuse you. I want you to respond to this. Well, how could I with you talking over me? Well, because you're not responding. Because then I would be well, hearing other I, things I, coming from you. How could I respond when you change the whole topic, Arwen? Mormons believe they can become gods, have their planets in outer space, and become the next Adam and Eve and populate the earth. Is that Christian when there's nothing you like that in the Bible? Believe. Excuse me, Arwen. I, I know, you don't know. I, I've been to the freaking church, okay, for a year. Oh, every ahead, just talk to yourself. I know what This is bollocks, okay. guys. This is bollocks. They don't think. Right, yeah, it is kind of bollocks. So I appreciate the value of this show, says Good Servant. I could, hey, I, I themselves could. don't take it seriously or literally Arwen. at Arwen. all. Can you calm down, Arwen? No, Arwen, please. I stood. I, calm down. <laughs> I am sick of being attacked over my time. Yeah, you're talking <laughs> over everybody. You can't have a conversation like this, Arwen. Come on, man. I went Relax. to a Mormon. Everyone stop. Oh, Everyone stop. Tenth man, Arwen, both of you. Come on, just take a breath for a second. One of you oh, take me. the reins initially, and then the other respond. Hopefully, Mormon, one of you will take. I, I went to take a God. I haven't even finished laying out the <laughs> guys. Hello, I haven't even finished saying. Can you calm down, take a breath, and you're already talking over me? I'm just trying to get you to calm down so that it comes through coherently, regardless if I agree, disagree, doesn't matter. Just as long as the audience can hear, one at a time, please. Mormons don't believe they become gods. To assert that is retarded and dishonest. And when I prove you wrong, what will you do? Uh, read uh, their God. scripture. Once you finish, Darwin. When I prove you wrong, and when I they prove you wrong, what will you do? Okay, shut up. If I yeah. prove you wrong, then what will you do? Well, why would you even insert such a ridiculous notion? Have you ever heard an actual Mormon tell you that they literally believe that? Yes. Well, then you met some nutty people because the no. Mormons that I Hold met on. didn't believe Hold that. Hold on. I win. Go ahead, 10th. Please mute him. It's the only way. Yes, it's in their writings. I will find them and post it in Master B. comes from their prophets. It is what a bishop as well as many other Mormons have told me face to face. One time I was uh, sharing the true Jesus of the Bible with a Mormon. And he said, no way, we don't believe that. In the very point in case that we are going to become gods, have our own planets, have eternal sex, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, yeah, you do. And I know where it is in your writings. He says, no, we don't. And yeah. he said, he said, well, my bishop's here. Let's go ask him. I said, good, let's go ask your bishop. So we walked to the corridor, saw the bishop, and the bishop's wife was there. And he says, this guy is a Christian. And he says that Mormonism is not true Christianity. And he said that, uh, well, go ahead, say it. And I said what I said. I said, I, your prophets and Mormonism teaches that God was once a man and that man will become a God and you'll have your own planets. And before I could finish, the wife interrupted and said, that's right. And I'll become a goddess and I'll be eternally pregnant. Yes, that happened. Okay. So how did the other guy respond? Did he fall in line or did he feel no. this is wrong? He had a, a shock, horror, cognitive dissonance face. What do you think? Yeah. Well, that means he didn't believe that. But that means, just that means because their freaking mean, scripture says it doesn't mean they all just believe that. Oh, gosh. Arlen, yeah, you're, gosh. You're, you're first degree, your first degree Mason doesn't know 33 degree Mason beliefs either. What are you trying to tell me here? That, that's actually funny that you mentioned because a lot of Freemasons that get into that shit on the lower level have no idea what it's do with the shape of the earth. Come yeah, on. So Duh. why does that make them all believe the because, top tier? The because, that, because that why? woman, that woman who said she's going to be a goddess was that guy at one time who didn't believe it either. You started this, Tony. It's the narrative. 
I'm not yeah, to, to try to, try to, try to bring it. Freak no, in a book is okay. Oh, in, in, in multiple religious books, it's just oh, like wait. you got to kill this person if they do this. You got to oh, do wait. that, right? Does that mean that every freaking follower of the religion is going to do that? I didn't no. say, and, Arwen, I didn't say anything about what you're making up. You are crazy right now, Arwen. No. Crazy. Oh, no, I'm not. You're just yes, Arwen, you are. You're it's about what you attack the narrative. Okay. They could, could I could I try to bring it back to the original point that Tony tried to bring up that these guys are not holding Danny Faulkner as a credible source for the heliocentric model because he's a I don't know creationist Christian whatever right and what John's point was was that well even in that narrative they still have creation because. Of the second the the laws of thermodynamics right so it's like it's kind of just silly that they don't see him as credible but the other guys are when all of them know that creation had to be a thing and my point was that by challenging danny faulkner regardless of whether he's like got a religious view or not demonstrates that this is not about religion it's about what shape is the earth literally that was my point doesn't have to explode from that point. Let's just accept the point on face value. Well, you said he had a, he, he has a religious viewpoint, but he doesn't. That was where it kicked off. Right, but it doesn't matter. Uh, My yeah, point was, done, no, hold was, on, sleep more. Just summarize your point, please. Uh, please, 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 for the love, please. Just let QE just summarize his point. You're saying it doesn't matter. It's just going to piss him right off, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yes, I thought I just did. That's where the the whole brouhaha kicked off when Anthony said that he has a religious view, and I'm telling you that he doesn't, because Christianity is not a religion. From the perspective of the ball, though, he does. Now I know you don't. I don't necessarily... deal with perspectives of retards. I deal with truth, absolute. I know, but again, I'll make my point because it still stands. If it was about anybody's religious view from their perspective, we would we would shield Danny because we wouldn't want to attack him. It's got nothing to do with whether he's got a religious view or not. If they think we've got some element of religious towards our view, then attacking Danny because of his views about the shape of the earth it would be fruitless, wouldn't it? Because we would protect him. And that was my point. And my point is that he doesn't have a religious view. Okay. But from their perspective, he does. So your point is kind and of like much, I said, I, I don't argue. I, 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 don't argue from their position because their position is retarded. So I don't take that position into account. Just going to do a quick shout out to Tina Baker, who's one of my patrons. Thank you very much indeed for the super chat, Tina Baker. She says, good day all. Research calcium toxicity, calcification in arteries and soft tissue. Research vitamin K2 deficiency, and then in quotes, got milk? Question mark. Thank you very much indeed for the super chat, Tina Baker. I posted it in Master B for you, Arwen. Go read it, okay? No. Okay. So no apology for you being. Wow. So no apology for you being a jerk. Nope. Uh, I guess not. Then I guess. Uh, wow, Arwen. We'll Come leave on, it right there. Uh, leave off Arwen. No, we'll just leave look, it right look, there. Look, look. You've proved your point Here's to Arwen. I, I've made all my argument. I got a zero response in return. Only complaints and even said, oh, you're being crazy right now. No, I'm not going to read it. You made a zero. You haven't given me yeah. any sign you listen to a word, what I said, or even the context of it. Man, you live in you, your Arwen. own parallel Thanks, universe. Tony. You have an argument with yourself and threw me in there. Are you nuts? I just don't overgeneralize to such extent. I just don't do it. Uh, I didn't overgeneralize. I have a citation for you that this is what they teach. Now, does every Mormon adhere to it? No. But this is what Mormonism teaches. That's what right. I said. Yeah, that's right. So does that make every Mormon literally believe that? Here or we go again. Every Mormon <laughs> Thanks, Tony. actually Gosh. teach that. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm done with your argument. No, that's good. That's good. You are done with me because your argument is shit. Just because something is taught in a book doesn't mean that the whole society that deals with that book is going to teach that. It's just not true. 
What are you talking about? Hold on, I just want to summarize this. Calm down, tenth and nine. Hold on, I don't want it to go around in a full circle with you shouting at each other again. So he made the example, Owen, and by some extent you're right, because in his example he's explaining that the person he's explaining it to him doesn't believe it either until he's explained what his religion actually is. And we do this daily. People say, well, I don't believe that. Oh, well, it matters not. That's your religion when we're talking about heliocentricity. And in this instance, 10th man having a greater knowledge than the people he has to explain it to is kind of agreeing with you, but it doesn't change his point. That that is just their rhetoric, their religion, their viewpoint. And you're saying, well, no, it doesn't mean that they all believe it. Well, yeah, but don't we know it? It's true with heliocentrism. Half the time, the contradictory nonsense they don't accept themselves doesn't make it not part of their religion. That's 10th man's point. Well, I had the whole twist to the situation that is that I kind of left the Mormon church when I noticed that the the vicar, the, the one leading the church, was actually by his own impulse introducing heliocentric globe shit to children. That pissed me off so badly. That, that was your first point. That was where it went off on a tangent and you've got QE, you know, la latching on to the word Christian in the same way we would latch on to people saying science and we're like no 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 don't call it science that's actually pseudoscience and you wouldn't I wouldn't let that go I'd get the bit between my teeth like QE did and just wouldn't let it go regardless of that being your original point so we're finally we've this, we're back on the rails hopefully that'll calm everyone down no no it's full steam ahead. apart from you who's won this point of course back on the rails full steam ahead let's go this is bullshit <laughs> Shout out to Tony. <laughs> so well, I'm, I'm glad 10th Man agrees with uh, me. Well, no, 10th Man gave an excellent example and demonstrated his superior knowledge in this regard. You've just got to be a bit... What's the word? Got to have a bit of humility, unfortunately, Arwin. Sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll just apply humor instead. Fine. Give us the holy underwear. Can you leave that underwear? <laughs> Pulling it over your shoulder. And just, and just to back you up to the man, I'm a practicing Mormon myself. And you're right. A lot of people don't know, like, even people who have been in the church for years don't know, like, a lot of that basic doctrine. And they're surprised when they hear it. And there's some cognitive dissonance about it afterwards. You're right, Jeff, man. I can't believe my ears. I see my steez agreeing with you. My yeah. God. How would, they, you know, how would they not know these things, though, if they go to church there? Are these things not broadcast and things that they're proud of believing? But, but Does R.C. Meisty have some holy underwear? Oh, well, let him answer. Go ahead, yeah, I almost got a pair oh, for Hold that. on a second. Go ahead, R.C. Sorry, I didn't hear the question. What was it? Do you have holy underwear? No. Chocolate's question. <laughs> Can you repeat your no, question? George? Not my question. I think it was Travis. I am was... not here to talk about my fundamentalist religious yeah. beliefs. No, we're not going to hold you to task that either. Yes, you are. Don't, don't it was, panic. It we're was not gonna, my question. And we're not going to hold you to task on it. Very simple. It's just how is it a surprise to Mormons? These are the tenets of their religion. This is their afterlife. How well, because, this comes as a surprise? Because a, lo isn't because a lot of people don't pay attention. Me, isn't this something that should be touted he's just explained rather than because people don't pay attention didn't. travis that's why i, I, I well I was it, it happened it though. happens just in the way that everything else happens with religion some people are like very adherent and pay attention other people don't and just like spout off what they think they know about the dogma or the theology of their religion I mean, it's pretty normal, as Nathan pointed out correctly in heliocentrism, uh, like the idea of the heliocentric model. People talk about stuff that they don't have any clue about, and then they say wrong things. I mean, it's no different with any other heliocentrism. <laughs> yes, pe people who yes, uh, you're actually right, QE. Like people who claim to believe in heliocentrism don't know a lot about heliocentrism and people who claim to believe in Mormonism or Catholicism or Buddhism or Hinduism a lot of times don't know a lot necessarily. Did you call heliocentrism heliocentricism? <laughs> yeah, I, like I probably misspoke. Who cares? He, he's, <laughs> who cares? He categorized it while... Explain how we're more, more importantly, he categorized it whilst talking about religions, which I thought was much more pertinent. But there we go. 
But how about Scientology? No, I'm, I'm yeah. being how many honest. people do you think I'm being actually honest, know Nathan, the I'm backstory to people Scientology? People who claim to know about something or believe in something often don't know a lot. No, I get it. You're, you're agreeing with me. I'm just slightly in shock. <laughs> Why? Because I'm being honest and intellectually honest about something? Of course. Okay. I'll take this right. quick moment Intellectually here honest, accidentally correct, you pay. But upon this disclosure, somebody, namely Anthony, is now going to try and have you to task on something in the heliocentric rhetoric. You realise that, right? <laughs> I want to change topics. That's anybody fine. know we have gas pressure in an open system? <laughs> Say that again, Anthony. I want to change topics. Does anybody know how we can have gas pressure in an open system? Hello again. Much of a topic left, is there? So <laughs> I can't so believe that tangent that was created. <laughs> It was beautiful. Why, why, why do you say that, Anthony? No, it's beautiful. Because it's a total off-topic tangent. So what? Perfect. Not off-topic. Are there any ballers that can explain why how we're breathing on an open system? Anybody? And back on track. Because yep. because the air. Go on, RC. Because there's a force acting on the atmosphere. What what force would that be? I just said it. So there's a force acting on it. What what force would that be exactly? I just said it. Gra <laughs> what is gravity? <laughs> gravity is not a force. It's time. <laughs> Even if it was, explain to us how it works. <laughs> Fair enough. Go ahead, Anthony. I'm going to put myself on mute. Even if gravity <laughs> was a force, RC Meister, yes, explain what we've, we're doing to we, Guys, we've been, in this, we've been in this circle like 35,000 times. We all we all know where it ends up. You yeah, guys obfuscate you lose and it. deny. <laughs> no, you guys, you no, guys obfuscate the, the, and deny. I show good evidence for it. and That's you guys too generalized nope, nope, nope. baseless assertion fallacy. So you have evidence of gravity being a force? No, no, I'm I prepared to give it, it just so we There's can a 9.8 forward. meter per second squared. That's an effect. Downward force. That's an effect. Not Great. with gas, it doesn't. Helium Great. balloons. Great. Great. No, no, I'm guys. Helium but, balloon. Don't let him try to explain it first before you crush it all. Look, uh, look I'll let Anthony do yeah. it on the last show. I'm going to let him do it now. He did it with Brenda. Go ahead, Anthony. The QE, just okay, let so him. Let him have it. Let him have it. Just for this one discussion, Just for this one discussion, Arcee. Okay, I'm on mood. I want you to explain to me how it works in in just in this context. Yeah, there's a 9.8 meter per second squared acceleration downwards that affects downwards. how the gas molecules are traveling. Okay, so do you know how fast these molecules are traveling? Just told you. Maybe not not at escape velocity, that's for sure. Okay, so so they're traveling at about four to five hundred meters per second, according to what we get told, right? Now, if Newton's first law of motion at remains at true, at various and an temperatures. object's motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by a force. Now, we know that the force that you're describing has got this acceleration, right? But we also know it's proportionate to its mass. Now, we, we, we have a problem because the particles or the, the molecules of gas are very, very, very small in mass. So how small is the effect of gravity on them? Very, very, very small. So, given that they're traveling at, say, 500 meters per second, right? They're going to be in space in maybe, what, 30 seconds max? They're not, they're going to be... they're not traveling at 500 meters per second at all times. Yeah, they, they are. Because what, how are they, what's happening to make them go faster or slower? Uh, various energy being imparted on them, hitting other molecules. Like, lots of different things can Lots yeah, of different the things. That's uh, hold on, Kiwi. Go, go ahead, sleeping warrior. Temperature. <laughs> because we've got gas pressure, we know that the molecules have hit the ground because that's where we, we get the pressure from when they when they you know bounce off the uh, walls no, of the container. No, we don't. We don't get the case, we don't get the pressure yes. from them hitting the ground. Yeah, that's what it says. It says we hold get on, the gas pressure Anthony. from the path you, hold on. bouncing. That's what. That's hold what on, hold on, said. Anthony. You've hand waved Anthony. what he said. He said there's energy being inputted, and then you've completely ignored him. No, I, I said I didn't say emitted. I said imparted on the molecules. 
Yeah, Either energy being imparted on the molecules. Yeah, kinetic. I heard you. I heard you. I'm backing you. I'm saying he's ignored you. You're saying energy is being imparted on the molecules, and Anthony's essentially ignored you. I'm I'm backing you. <laughs> energy's being what on the molecules? Imparted according to RC. Okay, so the energy that's being imparted. Explain to me the process that that's coming from. Where's where's this energy coming from? There's a couple different kinds. There's electromagnetic. There's kinetic. Okay, and what are they doing? Are they speeding uh, no, no, no. up? I'm sorry, down? Anthony. I'm sorry to interrupt you continually. No, no. Where's, <laughs> where, where's it coming from? Don't describe types of energy. You said it was being imparted. So, imparted from yeah. what? He said kinetic so energy. <laughs> so, so oh. if it's kinetic, if it's kinetic, then it's going to be from hitting something else. If it's electromagnetic, it's going to be electrons being excited from the fact that there is electromagnetic radiation, usually in the form of heat and light, that's interacting with those molecules. Light's not electric nor magnetic. So, you know, when these particles are coming in towards the Earth's surface, right, the temperature increases significantly because the surface temperature is like 25, 30 degrees at times and whatnot. That excites the particles and it gives them more velocity, right? And we know that the particles are very, very, very small. You can't even see them, right? You need a, a microscope. So the mass is also very, very small. And we know that gravity is um, proportionate to the mass. So what so it would take a very, very small amount of force to keep them where they are. Yeah, but they're moving though, aren't they? And they're moving away from Earth at all times because we've got pressure, we're breathing it. So they must Not they must have been away contact. from Earth. They're moving one at a time. Hold on, Arcee, Arcee, hold on. Arcee, just one at a time. Direction. You're talking over him. I didn't hear the end of his statement. Just hang on till he finishes. Go ahead, sleeping warrior. So we know the particles have made contact with the Earth because we've got the gas pressure, right? And therefore we know that once it's made contact with the Earth and it bounces off, all directions are going into space, every single direction, right? So we know that the flow, unless there's a continuous incoming flow to give us an, a continuous influx, like geocentric perhaps, and we're not on a geocentric model according to the model, it's heliocentric, there must be something that's bouncing the particles back because we wouldn't have any gas pressure to breathe unless there was. Okay, if that's your hypothesis, wonderful. Where, where is there any evidence of anything bouncing it back? No. That's his question ah, to you! Oh, done. Say that again. Where's there any evidence of it bouncing it back? What, towards Earth? Well, no, there isn't. There's no container. It just fucks off into space. Mm, well, you're saying that there is. So I'm saying where's the evidence? Oh, are we? Sorry, no, no, no. We're saying that without a container, there can be no pressure. And you're asking us what okay, it's bouncing great. off? So where's the, where's so the it's bouncing off something, right? Because without it bouncing off something, it would just keep going into space, wouldn't it? You haven't you haven't proven that. You haven't proven What's the that? definition of gas pressure? <laughs> incorrect. It's incorrect. So, <laughs> so what's turning it round? Where, where does the pressure come from once it hits the Earth? Because every direction's into space, right? So that on your model, there's got to be something that turns it around and bounces it back to Earth. But you haven't got a, a ceiling, and you haven't got like, and even with gravity, given the size of the mass that we're, the gravity is working in in its favor, the gravity like effect is like z virtually it's not zero, but you can think of it as zero. What's stopping the particle from disappearing into space? The fact that there is a downward acceleration. No, there isn't a downward acceleration. Sorry. He told you, what, show us the 9.8 meters per second squared and 500 meters per second. Yep. It's proportionate to its mass, and its mass is virtually zero. So proportionate to virtually zero is virtually virtually zero. So how does it stop it's that 500 not, meters per second not velocity? It's zero, though, path? without it. And you know that. From NASA, the molecules and a gas are in constant random motion and frequently collide with each other in the walls of a container. Because the molecules are in motion, a gas will expand to fill the container. Since density is defined by the mass divided by the volume, density depends directly on the size of the container. NASA. Thank you. That's a that's a that's a wonderful example of gas being in a little jug. No. There. He didn't say jug. He didn't say jug. Where's jug in my citation? Container. 
contain. Where's my? Where's the jug in my in the contain. citation? Where's the jug? Citation. Okay, I'll tell you what. Sorry. You keep on trying to talk over me. I'll he fucking is, mute your ass. He's just talking over you, what saying you container, container, Quite. container. Yep. That's what he's doing. Rumpusing the hell out of you. So this nine point. Yeah, I'm saying, give me evidence of a container. I'll believe you. Fine, great. Uh, That's your right. hypothesis. <laughs> That's not a hypothesis. In the, in the That's example, a necessary the, antecedent in, consequent. Oh yeah, according yeah, to which NASA. law? NASA. Uh, according to which according law? To the, NASA the second law, law of thermodynamics. According to the NASA law. NASA law. You're a clown. I, I ask you for the law, and you say, ah, the second law, come on, Kwan. If a container wasn't required, why would they speak about a container? Because they're giving you an example in the second law, or the laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> that's not oh, an answer. Wow. So, so if that's a law... Hey, quantum, would... quantum. Don't ask me anything. Quantum, so bring it together a, a little bit. Bring it together a little bit. Here, I already quantum. exposed you on 24-7, and they all laughed at you. <laughs> <laughs> if they were laughing at me... You're a clown. <laughs> on 20... Okay, I'm yeah, a clown. Yeah, you are. Man, so, cl clown RC Meister would like to know... Uh, we don't care what you'd any... like to know. Explain how you can have gas pressure without a container, and then demonstrate it. I'd like to see evidence. Then of demonstrate it. I'm asking you. You guys are making the claim that there's a container. Yeah. No, so no, is NASA. So, so, sorry, QE. I just want to get his attention for a second. Okay. So, so far, your rebuttal consists of there's a force downwards 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, gas expanding. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just summarizing your position. You don't need to nod along, meaning that my words are cut off in summary of your position. Thank you. So your claim is that there's a downward force, but gas is expanding in all directions. Ununiformly, as evidenced by the... How can they be moving in all directions and then be moving down at 9.8 meters per second squared? <laughs> well, you can just look at the fact that there is indeed a gradient. There's a contradiction in your in statement, sir. How can that. gas <laughs> molecules be moving down? Listen to what I'm saying. How can gas molecules be moving at 9.8 meters per second squared down and at the same time be moving in random different directions other than down? That was a completely nonsensical question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a right, so to summarize, the gas which he's claiming has a force acting on it, what force will the effect of me describing 9.8 meters per second downwards, defined by a helium balloon, as summarized right at the beginning of this little discourse between RC Meisty and QE? Yeah, defined by a helium balloon, mate, not down, and that would be going up. But gas in general expands in all directions. So you're attributing your attribution of this downward force when you have something more dense returning from whence it came that isn't applicable to a gas that expands in all directions that's as concise and clear english as i can make it rc mycy it's not complex gas isn't just moving down it's moving in all directions not just down so nathan as i already pointed out it does not expand in all directions uniformly how do we see this? In the fact that there's a pressure gradient. Now, is there anything in wow. this world that could explain the fact that it does not expand uniformly? What do you mean uniformly? Uh, how do it's we not have that pressure gradient? <clears throat> it's, you that, you said, it. hold on a second, wait a second, you little red herring fallacy twat. You said that gas molecules are moving down at 9.8 meters per second squared. How can that be true? And then gas behavior states that they move randomly in all directions at high speeds. Do you see the contradiction? No, you're just no. using the incorrect application no. of an example. No, it's not going to make it here, son. How can you hold two mutually exclusive positions at the same time and then tell me no? I don't hold two. Yes, you do. You said they move down that. when gas behavior is moving randomly in all directions. I said. Did, can you tell, said tell me the difference between all directions and down? What's the difference between those? 
I said that there's a 9.8 meter per second down squared downward acceleration. Yes, of there gas molecules. Accelerations yeah. in other directions. Yes, of gas molecules. Or forces in other directions. Yeah, yeah of gas molecules. That same How can they be moving down and at the same time be, be moving randomly at all directions? Well, you can see that there are forces, multiple forces. Acting How can they be moving down up? and at the same time move in all directions? I was just answering. So if you see it's a, a force contradiction, you freaking clown. You can't answer quantum, it. Your, it's unanswerable. Your, your confidence is showing again. It's on it. Oh, your yeah, I lack confidence. <laughs> can I get an answer to this paradox? How can they be moving down? and then be moving randomly in all different directions at high speeds at the same time. You left. He can't. <laughs> may have dropped through the connection. He, he can't. It's a, it's a contradiction in terms. So when he's saying the gas is moving with this 9.8 meters per second per second, well, no, because the gas isn't moving down at 9.8 meters per second per second if there's also other gas particles moving up, potentially, at the same rate. So, no, the, the gas isn't moving down at 9.8 meters per second per second in line with their gravitational reification. It's moving freely and randomly in all directions. His straw man or red herring that he applied with, well, we see a gradient, so it's not dispersing equally, is a delta of gas pressure. A gas pressure gradient will be achieved if you have first a gas pressure. And you can't have that gas pressure if you have no containment for the gas pressure. In their rhetoric, they have a sky vacuum, a vast space for the gas to fill. They just say it isn't filling it because it's gradiated. That's preposterous and nonsensical because you must first have containment to have gas pressure to have the gas pressure gradient he's addressing to the question of how you can have gas pressure without a container. It was great. One refuted the other, right? You got an ideal gas well, yeah. law and you've got your 9.8 meter per second. <laughs> He's claiming both. Gravity well, he doesn't... Did the same thing. Sorry, he did the man. same Gra thing with, uh, with chocolate when he said the, 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 the cup of coffee is accelerating. You can, you can address the elders of heliocentrism if you wish. Gravity is not overcoming entropy. That's why back in the day when Anthony was still arguing about gravity and debunking it, he got very snippy with me and Quantum Eraser because we would say the following. You can have it. Have Reverend John Michelle and Cavendish slash uh, Einsteinian gravity at full effect 200% each. You're still not going to overcome entropy. It's part of their rhetoric. They know it won't overcome entropy. The fact that the people in the trenches assert at nausea that a downward force of 9.8 metres per second is applicable to a gas expanding in all directions is a contradiction in terms. You won't find it in the rhetoric because it's obvious <coughs> nonsense. Gravity won't save you. And where, space where, is fake. Where is it? Where'd he okay. go? He ran away. Dude, he left. No, he ran away. He did that before when he started talking about the conservation of momentum, and I asked him to define it, and he friggin' boogered off. What a clown he is. Hey, next time you come back, I want to see those holy underwears. And with that, I'm going to say, if you're watching this on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream, then, <clears throat> excuse me, stay tuned, as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you. Smash the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. Another massive, enormous thank you to all of today's Discord and G Plus panels for making this live show possible. I say stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley 1980, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!